Hey guys, welcome to Creativity in Focus, a weekly live video podcast where we interview an artist and it's art every week. And today we are starting season three. Before I introduce you to an, another amazing artist, a few housekeeping items. So we are live right now. The basic reason for that is because we really enjoy your participation. Whatever you're watching, there is either a chat box or a comment box either beside or below the video. Use that box to interact with us, ask questions to the artist. So anytime you get, you ask a question, I'll get here and I'll be able to ask directly to him and he is going to answer you directly. So that's very fun and very cool. Also because the energy is totally different, right? And the other thing is we rely on you to get the word out about this podcast. The only purpose of this podcast is really to highlight artists and what they are making and create more visibility to them. And a great way that you can do this is by sharing the podcast. It is content only. Nobody's going to sell anything. So it's safe for you to post in groups as well. And you're going to be highlighting what our artist does. Okay. And with that, you create more visibility for the podcast as well. This podcast is live right now in at least three different social medias, but it goes later to all the podcast directors. So you can always find past interviews as well. Okay, my artist today is Eric Jensen. And Eric makes an amazing wall art using the keys from keyboards from old computers. So not only he is creating art, but he's also recycling material, which we all need more and more, right? Yeah. We don't want to throw all that in the sea nope. and harm <laughs> the corals and the turtles and everybody else, right? Mm. So Eric, before we start talking, what about if we show them some of the pieces that you make Absolutely. so they get an get, idea? Get to the art, right? Yes. So we are going to show you first three uh, pictures of his work of art, and I would like you to tell them uh, also the size of these pictures, uh, the Absolutely. This pieces. Okay, so here's, here goes the first one. So this one is uh, called The Unknown. This one's about oh, two and a half feet. It's made from a thousand keys. A thousand uh, keys. A thousand keys. So this is, these are my emotions. So I try to take a thousand keys and try to convey emotion which is shaped in colors. So that's what these ones are. So I'm trying to convey The Unknown. Um, and these are feelings that I've been feeling and going through, so that's what that one is. They look like beautiful feelings. Isn't they beautiful? <laughs> and it's fun to see the yellow ones. If you look at the yellow ones, those are the old people, computer <laughs> keys, and, you know, people that can't see very well, and so those letterings are big, and so they're fun to find they're those fun. and be able to encode those in there. And you'll notice some of these colors are not no more computer keys. Um, uh -huh. They've been dyed. So I take all the beige ones or yellow ones and I soak and then, those in dye. And however long it stays in the dye is how dark they get. That's fun. So that's, that's fun. Why. I bet we're going to talk more about that. Let's see one more. Okay. So this one is anticipation. This is another emotion Emotional that I'm trying one. to convey. Uh -huh. So anticipation. anticipation. And another one. This one is Aspire. Uh -huh. So these are all the different emotions that I try to convey. So okay. that's Aspire. And we are going to show soon some of the animals that you make as well. Yes. How, how did you get started? So I have different um, themes I've been working with. So I did the emotions, I put those, mm -hmm. the ones we just saw. Uh, I try to take a thousand keys, try to convey emotion. Um, some I do animals, I do different things. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not really interested in the outcome, the mm -hmm. artwork itself, which is kind of backwards for an artist typically. Uh -huh. They're more interested in what they're making, the artifact and the experience that they have. Mm -hmm. But I'm very interested in the experience and the process. And I think that is so fascinating to me to take something that is so valueless and that people really don't want it. Mm -hmm. And there's so much history in that computer mm -hmm. keyboard and mm -hmm. the keys itself. And some of the keys I get are from the 80s, so they're 40, 50 years old. Wow. And they're so beautiful, uh -huh. and they have so much history in them. And I get some old ones with fractions in them, like mm -hmm. the old keyboards or things that are not on the keyboard today. Uh -huh. And so I love that, and there's so much... I'm just so interested in the process, uh -huh. really. Yeah. And so the artwork, so I just make themes. Uh -huh. um, whatever I'm inspired by images and things like that and that mm -hmm. kind of where I do my art but I'm really more interested in the process. Yeah I, I get that because I'm the same way. I enjoy the process of creating something and once yeah. it's done it's done and you know move on. 
that's true. But and the other thing I think is very interesting in what you do is that, of course, with the keys, you create a story. Yes. Emotions, animals, whatever it is. But at the same time, every single key has its own story. Absolutely. Some of those keys wrote loss, romances, and you know all kinds of stuff out there. Yes, and so that's one thing that drives my art. I'm very interested in how people interact with that keyboard. They have memories with it. They wrote love letters, yes. things like that. There's so much history. And it's funny because people will be like, oh, I have an old keyboard. Can you please make art out of it? I love this keyboard. I just can't throw it away. But I I can't keep it here. And so there's obviously that connection. That connection. Yeah, and I love using things that people have connection with. And I was an art teacher before I did okay. the arts, and I noticed um, as being an artist and teaching the arts, I noticed how there's so much ignorance in the art mm -hmm. and they'd be like oh that's a beautiful oil painting but they really don't understand what goes into an oil painting yes. or watercolor how challenging they are but they're like well why is that famous that painting so famous it's just a painting but they don't really understand mm -hmm. what goes into it and all that kind of stuff and so, all, all the emotions as well in the process yeah. right and so with the keyboard i realized that people connect with it and it was automatic Mm -hmm. And they're oh, I've seen a keyboard, oh, what? whoa. And so it was very, it opened up to a lot of people. And so it's been, I have a lot of followers that are not artists, mm -hmm. and artists as well. But I've noticed a majority of my followers are not arty people. Uh -huh. And I can connect to them. To them. And I think other mediums is harder for people to connect to oil paintings they don't really understand or watercolors or clay unless they've had experience with it then they may connect better but with the keyboard everybody's had connection yeah, with oh, it little kids and it's fun because i have little kids uh -huh. that i just think it's the coolest thing and it's and i travel all over and then my artwork is i display it all over and so it's been fun to see how people interact with it and i love that that's and cool. i love keeping people engaged and helping the arts by using other things and other now mediums. when you were an art teacher you're not dealing with keyboards right where, no where i teaching? wasn't dealing with keyboard when i was a teacher uh -huh. i taught sculpting um and drawing and i also taught american client with being born deaf so i have a cochlear implant and so i taught um as well sign language sign language as okay well. and how did you get started in keyboards then <laughs> so it's actually a a funny story is cool. actually it was a college assignment when I was back in the art school when I was doing art a college professor gave us an assignment that we had to take something that people don't want mm -hmm. and make it into something they want again that. so that was our assignment and it could be figuratively or literal or whatever and I had an old keyboard and I was like well this is beautiful but I really don't want it so maybe I'll just make a little sculpture out of it so I made a little face that was coming out of a keyboard it was kind of this uh, I was trying to convey the internet, how people are very verbal on the internet, and they thought that. So <laughs> anyway, so I took it to my professor, and he's like, that's so cool, do more, do more. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I just started asking people, and I realized that the keyboard weren't being recycled. And it's actually true that keyboards can't really be recycled. Really? Uh, E-waste recycle company will take it, but they really don't know how to recycle it. Huh. Just because a uh, different company has had their own blends of plastic, it's not a pure plastic. So if you get acrylic, you can melt it back to acrylic, but mm -hmm. the keyboard is made out of multiple plastics, oh. so it's not considered pure, mm -hmm. and it's contaminated, it's dirty, so it's hard to clean, and so it's not worth it. So most keyboards end up in the, in the garbage, in wow. the landfill most of the time, because they really don't know how to recycle it. So they'll take that? the metal and the cord, but then they'll just throw away the plastic. Huh. That is very interesting. So it's really sad. And it I is. learned that and I was like, well, gosh. So I started experimenting. I'm like, well, what can I do with the keyboard? This is obviously a good medium. That it's a worthwhile medium yeah. that we can. So I just start, started experimenting. I spent a lot of time. I kind of drove my wife crazy, <laughs> but that's okay. I drove myself crazy. But I spent so much time trying to figure out how to use them. I experimented. I thought about it every day for years, trying yeah. to figure this out. And then I finally kind of came up with the idea of pixelations. Um, and I just really fell in love with that idea. And, it, and that's where I'm at today. And that so changed your life, right? It really has. I think it's really made me a different person. Yeah. And it's, 
it's been wonderful. I'm That's so cool. grateful for it. That's cool. I want to show three more pieces Absolutely. for them to get Bring a, them on. <laughs> a 360 idea of what you create. And just a reminder that we are live right now. So this is the perfect time for you to interact with Eric. He loves questions. And the best way I to do. do that is put as a comment or as a as a question on the chat box if that's what you have where you're watching we already saying sue sherry from australia is saying good morning and teddy adio is saying hello right now let's look at three more pictures but post your questions i want to know okay. what do you want to know oh so, i love that one i see oh, that in person and that beautiful <laughs> it person, is right? very, very and beautiful. it's hard because the pictures are wonderful but they're so much better in person the yes. textures is outstanding um this one is called soaring uh, this one, uh, there's a well-known um, leader that I admire, and he passed away, and he loved birds, so I did this one in honor for his passing. Oh. And so it's a bluebird, and it's about made from 2,600 uh, keys, which is about 30 to 32 keyboards that I had to take apart to be able to build this to, one. To build this yeah. one. Wow. So and you know by heart how many key keys are on a keyboard, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's 104. Really? 104 keys. <laughs> but I can only use about 88 to 92 keys okay. because of their smaller ones, and so I can't use all of them. Okay. Yeah. Let's see another one. In a second. There you go. The oh, wolf. this yes. one is fun. This one's called Loyal. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's actually a quote. And in all of my artworks, I put hidden quotes with the letters of the keys. And in the bottom uh, right corner of it, it says, true friends or loyal. And oh. in the nose of the wolf, it has loyal. And so I put things that I've been thinking about. This one, I, I did this one in honor for a, a good friend of mine. Uh, he was struggling, and mm -hmm. I was trying to think of how can I be loyal to him. And I thought a wolf had a really good, uh, because they're very loyal yes, to their yes. pack. And it's, it's, it's been really fun to look at my artwork because they are actually journals. I can go back and look at my artwork and be like, oh, I was dealing with that or thinking mm -hmm. about that. Because I put hidden quotes and words about the things I've been thinking about in all my artwork. So they all have hidden words and quotes and stuff. Yes, and, and that's another uh, layer of your yes. art, right? Because you're doing the storytelling. I love storytelling. Oh, and I, me I, too. Yeah, and I'm, I like to find how people tell their stories. And you do that with the color. You do that with the pixelation. You do that with the image. You do that, that with the fact that they are keys. Recycle. And, and they are recycled. And then you use the keys also to create hidden messages yes. in that. So there's a phenomenal. lot of layers and that's what, so it's hard to, and that's why I love podcasts so I can talk about those different layers. <laughs> when people see it, they really just see one simple layer, yes. but it's a really rather um, complex. Yes. It's a really, there's so much to the artwork. Mm -hmm. True, true. And let's see one more. Okay. So this one is contrast. So this is mm -hmm. a zebra's head. Um, so this one is, it's mostly just the natural colors of the keyboard. Okay. The green on the bottom have been dyed, so some of those are. And it says, I can't, I'm trying to remember, it says, you cannot be your best you when you're not your, you cannot be your best you when you're not your best you at times. And mm. so you have to have that contrast. And so I was thinking about contrast in our lives and how that can make us better. Uh -huh. so. Fantastic, phenomenal. Terry, it, it, it's, it's interesting that this was basically two colors because Terry is asking, that is fantastic. Are those the original colors of the keyboard keys? No. So that's a good question. And that's a question that a lot of people ask me is, are they the original colors? The black and white and grays and some of those are um, but most of them, I take all the beige ones and then I soak them in dye. And however long it stays in the dye is how dark they get. Mm -hmm. So if they've been in a really long time, they get really dark. Like that wolf has some really dark and then some lighter ones. And so it just really depends. So you get all your subtones from the yes. dyeing process, So I have right? big shelves with all my different colors. And so I have a certain tone of colors. So I have like maybe... 10 or 15 shades of the reds, all the different tones, the, the more the yellow red, more um, burgundy or all those different things. So I have to do all those with the dye. And I do batches, so I uh, use up that dye because it's a very, uh, it's a very expensive, a very hard process. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of time to do the dyeing process. So I just do a dye batch and try to use up all my dye so that I can keep recycling, keep that 
because I'm very interested in recycling, using my mediums well, using my resources. Mm -hmm. um, and so I try to make sure I follow that principle in my art, in my dyeing process, and anything I do. But the interesting part is also that you can still see the letters on yes. the keys, right? So it's a transparent dye, so it doesn't ruin it. And people ask me, well, why don't you just paint them? That would be easier, spray paint them. But mm. I'm really, I really want to keep the key to its personality. That's what it was before. Yes. And so I try to keep it to the best I can to keep it, the, the letterings and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So yeah, That's it's cool. a transparent dye. Sammy is saying, I love how you incorporate the hidden messages inside your artwork. That extra layer is wonderful. Guest 3023, have you any inspiration to make a very large piece around 10,000 keys? Yes, I am trying to find companies. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been working with companies to sponsor that big of a project. Uh, my art is very expensive. Even though it's a it's recycle, recycle yeah. there's just a very expensive process to it. And so, and it's very time consuming. <laughs> it's not an easy yeah, process. It takes a lot of time. And so to do a 10,000 key will take me months. But my goal before I die is to do 100,000 keys, Ooh. which is going to be about 18 feet long uh -huh. and about 12 feet tall. It's major, and I've been trying to find companies that will be interested in sponsoring. I know there's a company out there. Oh, yes. And I I'm bet. a new artist. I've only been doing I came up with the idea about four years ago. Okay. I've been doing it professionally as an artist selling for about two years. Okay. So I it's just the beginning. I'm just the beginning. I'm, yeah. I'm a baby yeah. in this, <laughs> and I have so much. I'm so excited for That's my future. That's a talented yeah. baby. So, I yes, to I want to do a 10,000 key. <laughs> And Gina, your work is incredible. On average, how long does it take you to create each piece? So that's a good question there. It can take, depending on the project, some projects I can get really into it. Um, I did one project with the girl in the pearl. Erin mm -hmm. is a master, so I've been doing some of the masters. Um, and it, took, it just took me a couple of days, but that's all I did for a couple of days. And I was just so into it. Mm -hmm. And I just laid that whole thing and I just stand back and I was like, this is it. This is she, this is how she looks. And then I have to glue it. So gluing will take a couple of weeks and framing. So there, there's so much to it. It can take about a couple of weeks to a couple of months. And I work about, uh, I work on two or three or four projects at the same time because they're at different stages. Right. And so, yes, it may take me a couple of weeks to lay it, glue it, and frame it, but that doesn't count for all the time dyeing them, cleaning them, finding all the keyboards, mm -hmm. and organizing them and doing all that. So there's a lot of prep work that goes into the artwork before uh -huh. that I can actually, and designing it, be inspired. And I have to really study the image and I usually look at the real image and a pixelated image okay. of it. So I can kind of, because the pixelation, when the computer does it, it's not exactly, so, yeah. it's kind of weird. And so I do that, but I also have to look at uh, the real image to understand the colors mm -hmm. and all that, the values and everything. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, so it can take a couple weeks to a couple months. Wow. And uh, the, all your pieces uh, that I've seen, they're quite big. Yes, right? they're uh, usually about three or four feet or five feet. So I understand that uh, the more the detail, the more details, the bigger the piece will have to be. Usually, yes. But you are constrained by the size of the key, the right? Key. So how small can you go then? So the smallest I do is 400. And okay. those are my most popular um, because I have uh, collectors from all over the world. Yeah. And it's really hard to ship big artworks yes. and extremely expensive. expensive for customs and all that stuff. So I have just little 400s and they're just really simple. So 400 keys? Or it's 15 by 15 inch. 15 by, okay. And they're just really simple, they're fun. And I have, I think I just got a sale to Australia. So I, I think that's like my 10th country uh -huh. to have artwork in. Nice. And so it's been really, it's kind of a been fun project to be able to make my art accessible uh -huh. to, because Art can be non-accessible to everybody, so it's been fun to do the small ones. But the biggest one I've done is right now. I'm working on one that's almost it's five thousand keys, mm -hmm. which is five feet by like three and a half, four feet. Wow. So it's really big, uh -huh. and it's going out to Phoenix, Arizona. So you you started with a college project, and then you 
gave a lot of time to the, to the process until you found the process that you loved. And two years ago, you became a professional, right? So how was that? When, when did you figure out people want what I make? Or So when I started about four or five years ago, I came up with the idea and played with it. I was doing, I was doing one picture, a pixelation of a flower. And I took it to a show, and it did really well at the mm. show, even though it was really bad. It was crooked, the keys were falling off, it was just really <laughs> bad. And I was like, well, that didn't work, but people love it. And, there's, and I instantly realized how people were connected to it, mm -hmm. and that connection was so fascinating to me. I was just like, wow, there's that connection. I really want to play with that. And so I just started working on Saturdays after school, after mm -hmm. teaching me. I had to keep my job because right. I couldn't make a living off the art. So I still had to keep teaching, keep doing that. But I would designate all my Saturdays, um, all my night times um, to do this art. And I was so into it, trying to figure it out. And it took me a couple years to figure out my method. And I just kind of grew mm -hmm. a little artwork, little by little. And then I just started getting a lot of referrals, a lot of companies reaching out to me and say, hey, can we do our local mm -hmm. with your computer keys? And I do a lot of locals for companies, tech companies. Oh, cool. And I put like their mission statement, founders names, all that stuff. Uh -huh. And that just kind of happened. Because I, there's not really a lot of computer key artists. And so my medium is new. Mm -hmm. And also social media platforms help to get my name out there. And so that kind of helped me. Kept and so I process. started doing that. I did it a little bit and then I realized, you know what? I would like to do this more full time. So I was teaching and I asked my principal if I can do half half. So I was teaching every other day and my wife was teaching. Mm -hmm. So she was taking up the other so we can still make money. And I started putting time into the arts and yes. really growing it. And then it just kind of took over, and then I became really stressed because I couldn't keep up with teaching. And I really wanted to do the arts, and then I just realized, you know what? I'm just going to have faith, and I'm just going to do it. Good. So I just quit, and that was about a year and a half, two years ago. I quit teaching, and I just dove into it, and I just made it work. Uh -huh. it's, it's hard mm -hmm. to make the art work as a business, and people told me not to do it over and over. I had. A lot of people uh -huh. saying you're crazy, <laughs> and I was, and but I was determined, and I I follow business principles. I think you have to know, mm -hmm. you have to be a business minded, and I'm very business minded. I started a, a lawn care business when I was 13 years old, okay, and I did that for seven or eight years, uh -huh. and I, I grew that business nice. really well. And so I had that business minded, and my father is also a businessman. He good. owns his own business good. that he grew, and it's really successful. That's and so good. I have people in my family that are business people, and they kind of give that me helps. advice. That yeah. Helps. So I think you but have to follow business principles. You yeah. know what you said about people saying, don't do that, it's crazy. Did you ever watch The Labyrinth with David Bowie? No. no, you should. <laughs> I have watched 24 times. 24, wow. And there is a, there is a moment where the, the ogre and the girl, they're going through rocks. And the rocks are saying, don't go there. It's dangerous. You're going to get lost. And the girl asks the, the ogre, should we stop that? They are telling us not to go forward. And he said, what do they know? They're rocks. They never go anywhere. And I took that as the motto. Then when people say, don't do that, you're crazy. They don't know. They haven't, they haven't gone through what you've gone. So it's, it's different, right? Yeah, so yeah. I couldn't really base my, um, my future on something that they'll really understand or know. Yes. And yes. I knew it was, I knew there was that connection mm -hmm. and I wanted to keep helping uh, people connect with yeah. my art, and that was important to me. Yeah. And also recycling, and, and that's what's been it's so fun. It's a good fun. feeling. Recycling, yeah. and up to day right now, I'm almost about at 200,000 keys I've used in my art, and that's about 3,000 keyboards I've recycled. Mm -hmm. And so it's been so fun to be able to save that many keyboards. And I've taken up, I think I have about 2,000 keyboards in my back <laughs> Ooh. backyard in my studio. Um, I have about 100, 150,000 keys taken apart in my studio and then about 2,000 keyboards in my backyard that needs to be taken apart. So I think I have so about- 
You are driving your wife crazy, right? <laughs> yes. I, uh, we find computer keys everywhere, everywhere. in the house, yeah. in, the, in the sink, in the dishes. We find them everywhere. So That's yeah, fine. they're all over. They're great. Let's look at three more pictures of yes. your work. So let's see what we have here. So this one is tall. Uh, <laughs> this one made from 3,100 keys. So wow. it's a really big one. And it was, it's, it, it's, the quote in here says, you must stand in order to lift another. And so I was mm -hmm. thinking about how giraffes, they stand tall mm -hmm. and they're encouraged. And it's funny because the animals were one of my beginning series. So this was, the animals have a lot of my doubts uh -huh. as an artist of, can I do this? <laughs> am I really that crazy? Maybe I am crazy. So we'll find lot, it out. We'll there's find a lot out. of things about me not giving up, you know, so yeah. that's what that one Fantastic. is. Fantastic. The next one. So this one the is arch. the Utah Arches. It's a famous arch in Utah in Zion's Park. Um, this one is actually one of my first monuments or so something that I did outside of the animals. Mm -hmm. And this one, it was actually, it's a public art now. It was purchased by the community college in this area. Oh. The president of the school saw this in an art show and she said, I'd be crazy if I don't buy this for the school. So she pers uh, personally bought this for Fantastic. the school uh -huh. and it's actually in their campus in the hallway. So it's, a, it's really Awesome, fun. awesome. And the last one? So this one is a flowers a lot, uh, off to the side. It's a daisy. And this one had a quote says, focus on the simple things. Mm. And this was beginning of my career, trying to focus on the simple things, not getting overwhelmed with everything that yes. was coming at me and being an artist. And so that's, that, that's what fantastic. that one is. That's awesome. Kristen is asking, uh, Eric, stunning work. I love when art is made from unconvention unconventional materials. Do you work with any other mediums? So right now I just do computer keys, but I, I'm fascinated by it and I haven't gotten sick of them, which is kind of funny <laughs> because I think I get sick of something and then move on. Yeah. But I'm still so fascinated. There's so, so, much, so much history and there's so much to it that I haven't figured out. And I'm not going to quit until I feel like I'm a master at it. Mm -hmm. And I feel, and so I decided that I'm going to do a million keys before I quit because I feel like <laughs> that will help to be able to be the master at it. Uh -huh. Because I think, it, I think everybody should uh, take something that they like and become the best at best. it. So when I was a teacher, I said, okay, I'm going to become the best art teacher that I can be. And what I think is different from uh -huh. everybody else. So I decided with the computer keys, this is what I want to do. And I'm going to be the best computer key artist out there. And so, so I just cool. uh, follow that. And that's kind of what I've always been. That kind of drives me to say, okay, I'm going to be the best at this. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to push myself. And I've learned so much from it. So yeah, I can do other mediums. Uh, people have told me to do this and do that and do this. And those are great ideas, but I want to focus on this so I can learn. Yeah, there's so much. There's so much to learn when you stick at one medium and really master it mm -hmm. and really push yourself True. and try to figure out other ways to use it and things like that. So I think it's good to focus on one thing, but it's good to experiment <laughs> with other things. Yes, true, true. Yeah. Uh, I think this is a question a lot of people have. Guest 389 is asking, do you like puzzles? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did puzzles growing up, but I, I'm not a puzzle not person, thing. Yeah. so no. People say, they, are they like puzzles? No. no, they are not like puzzles uh -huh. at all because they don't fit together. Some of the keys are bigger and some are smaller. And so they... And the height is also yes. different, right? And so it's not just like stick them, uh, stick them and then they stay. I have to work <laughs> with them. Uh -huh. I have to get, I have to, sometimes I have to sand the key to make it to fit the size uh -huh. so that they work together. Because if one key is too big, then it mess up that whole, whole row thing. of keys. Wow. Uh -huh. And so it's a very time consuming process to make them work. So no, they're not like puzzles at all. <laughs> they're not more But that's a, good, that's a good question though. <laughs> Sammy, it's incredible how the master series is so true to the originals. So for those that don't know, he also made a series of famous paintings, right? I saw yeah. the Van Gogh one. 
Uh, yeah, so I did a Girl in the Pearl, the um, Sorry Night, the Creation, the Finger. So I'm doing iconic paintings. Um, they're on my website. So it's ericjensenart.com. And it's uh, Eric with a K, yeah. Jensen with an E-N, uh, art. Or you can look at my Instagram, Facebook, all those are you, just Eric Jensen art. You use and Eric Jensen You can art. see all the masters. And the masters is my newest project that I've been working on. Um, I've been really interested in the relation of pixelation, that word of how people interact with pixelation. And I started realizing that people were so obsessed over pixelations of the masters, but not the masters themselves. Hmm. So they'd be like, oh, I love the sorry night. I'm like, well, have you seen it? No. I'm like, <laughs> Well, then you're obsessed with that pic the picture of the sorry net, but you've never seen, seen it. it. It's mm -hmm. a whole different element, yeah. and it's so much different than a real person. Yeah. And so I started playing with that idea, so I started taking these masters and pixelizing them, and I said, well, if, if they're pixelated, then people should love them in theory. So it's <laughs> been really fun, and it's been really interesting. And in all my masters, I put tons tons of stuff about the masters themselves. So I study about how they sign their artwork and I sign it the way they do it. Hmm. I put quotes about them. I put their birthday, their death dates, the year that the painting wow. happened. Oh, all there. Just tons of stuff. So it's really fun. So you make sure you look at the masters, find all the things about the wow. masters themselves. Because I think it's, it's, so it's a fun way to be able to teach about the masters. And also it's a fun way to learn from them mm -hmm. and all the different styles and so how did that work in a pixelation? How would I um, show impressionism in a pixelation mm -hmm. form? So it's been really fascinating to study the masters, to learn from the different mediums, so yes. Yeah, it's cool. And, and Sam is saying, what is your, so uh, it is incredible how the master series is so true to the origins. What is your process to achieve that level of perfection? So I do, I have a computer program that pixelate it. So that helps me to measure it mm -hmm. because I want to measure it so I can fit it in the frame. I build all my frames myself, but I also look at the masters and I study them a lot. A lot. So I just study it and study it and study those shapes, um, understanding how to, you have to, my art is very, People just think, oh, I just pixelate it and I just know how to make it look that way. Mm -hmm. But it, it's, it's really like hard. Yeah. And when I lay it, I do a rough draft. I look at the picture, I look at the image, I look at the painting, try to figure it out. I'll lay it out, but then it doesn't look right. And so I uh, spent about a week uh, looking at it, looking at it, and pull one key out, change it and going back and forth. And I have my artwork on the table and I have a tall stool and I stand up on it to look at it downward, uh, try to get as far away as, as far possible. As you can. And I just look at it and look at it. No, that's not quite, and I just have to change it. And uh -huh. it can take about a week to a couple of weeks to kind of get that tweaking. Uh -huh. And it's really hard. And sometimes it's frustrating. I'm like, why am I sitting here trying to find that right key, you know? Um, but it just takes patience mm -hmm. and just try to get it until I, my heart is like, yep, that's it. And that is mm -hmm. what it is. And then I go back and glue it. So yeah, it does take a lot of practice. I've been doing it for a long time. So you have to understand I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> and the beginning pieces, when I first started doing, they were terrible. <laughs> the values everybody. were not good, yeah. the colors were not good. So yeah. when I first started doing it, they were just not good. <laughs> but I practiced and I really got I've tried to master it mm -hmm. and really understand, and I've studied pixelations a lot. A I've lot, studied yeah. it a mm -hmm. lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, that's how I'm able to do it. Now, Susie, she wants to know, how do you price your artwork? I would imagine it would be hard to price it based on hours, since, since it's such a long process. Yes. Um, so for me, yes, some of my artworks take a little bit longer than others, if I can't quite get it to work, it spends a little bit more time. So um, like my girl in the pearl, my master in the girl pearl, I just really got into it and I was just really in the zone. So it took a little less hours building it, but I was so into it where some of the other ones take so much more time. It's just, I just can't, there's that challenge. And so for me, I just base it based on the key mm -hmm. um, because I, as an artist, being a business person, you have to factor your studio rent, you have to factor 
all the stuff, your taxes, your all, everything that goes into the business, mm -hmm. you have to factor all that into it. So I factor all those things and say, what's the bare minimum of what's going to cost my business this? How much is it going to cost my business for this year? And I factor all those charges into all my artwork. Mm -hmm. And so I do it based on a key. So I price it on per key. Per key. Yes. And you have and that, that just on helps. your site, right? Like this number of keys equal this much money mm -hmm. and things and like if, that. Uh, and there's, I, so I have like three different prices. So my, if it has a lot of black, because black are not dyed, so I don't have to do that extra work. So if there's a lot of black, it's, this yeah. much per key, if it's 50-50 black dye versus, or white, white is really hard, so white is more expensive. Okay. Because I have to go a lot harder to find the white keys. So it just really depends on what I use into the artwork and how much quotes in there. And so for custom work, it depends on what I'm using. So cool. yeah, yeah. So I, cool. I hope that answered that question. It's <laughs> really hard to price artwork and people ask me, how do I price artwork? And it's, it is it's really hard, hard. Yeah, for, for every uh, artist. Every artist is hard. Jeannie is saying, the, wor the world needs more crazy people like you. Thanks for making art more accessible and upcycling. Oh, thank you. Sandy Ward, absolutely love your passion. Kelly Beckett, uh, blown away. It is obvious that this is a huge part of who you are. What you believe in and what drives you. Absolutely phenomenal work. Props to you. Thank you. Tina, do you sign your work? If so, how? So at the bottom of all my works, I have ECJ, the, the, the keys ECJ, my initials, so Eric C. Jensen. And that's in the bottom of all my artworks. And so that's how you know it's mine if it has an ECJ at the bottom. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that all of them had it. And I started that from the very beginning when I did it. And then I also signed them on the back. So mm -hmm. I made sure I signed them so that they're, they're mine uh, on the back. Um, my signature really is computer keys, so I don't really need to sign it with the pen. I sign it on the back for people mm -hmm. that want it, but my signature really is computer keys, and it's, nobody really does it, and so they know. When they see my artwork, <laughs> they're like, they know yep, it's yours. that's an Eric Jensen art, and ask him. That's what you want. So, yeah. yeah so. Terry's saying, uh, girl with an earring is amazing. Isn't it fun? <laughs> I love it. Paul, I was lucky to attend an exhibit of your work. Phenomenal. I noticed you incorporate different levels within the keys. It's not all flat. Can you expand on why you do that? So the reason why I like the texture, it naturally does that. And uh, the, I love that. Mm -hmm. It adds a lot. If it's flat, it ruins the history of the key because the ones that are really tall, they're coming off. The surface behind the art is flat. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are really tall are the old ones. Okay. And so you know the older ones are the tall ones and the newer ones are the shorter ones. So the 80s and 90s are really tall. Oh, uh -huh. Because that just, that, those years are really tall. Mm -hmm. They made them really tall, so they type. But today in our society in the 2000s and 2010s, they're trying to get shorter and smaller. Mm -hmm. And so that's why you get that texture. And so I love that texture because it shows the years. So depending if it's really tall, that means it's really old. Mm -hmm. If it's really short, that means it's really new. Mm -hmm. And so I love incorporating the ages mm -hmm. from the 80s all Fantastic. the way up to 2010. 2000. More story. Yeah. yeah. And so I love using that. And so yes, it has the texture. And Everybody that, um, most, I shouldn't say everybody, but most people that come up to my artwork, they're like, can I touch it? I'm like, no, I'm sorry, you cannot touch it. It's I art. I want to keep the artwork. It's art. Clean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so they just want to touch it. But I always have a sample when I travel. I have a little sample um, so they can feel it. Oh, so nice. I know yeah. you have to touch it. So yeah. whenever you meet me, ask for the sample so good. you can touch them. Yeah. Good, good. Melissa Terlisi, she's a sculptor. She's saying, wow, just visited your website. Uh, guess 6800, inspiring. Uh, Lori Miderman, wow, your art is wonderful. Thanks. Paul, congrats for considering your art business a business. Artists often- I think the art as a business, and I think that's how you should. And it's, it's hard, and I may be shot for saying this, it's hard because artists want to think that art 
if your art is good enough, it will sell. Mm -hmm. And I think it will, but I think there is business behind it. And so every artist, sh sh it's not a bad thing to understand business. Exactly. And it's not a bad thing to be able to make a living off of yeah. it. If, if you're good at it, you should be making a living and you should price it so you can the get quality. paid for yes. it. Yes. And I think everybody should get paid for the work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we shouldn't undersell ourselves because I, we're valuable to our society as artists and we exactly. add. Yes. And we are not just <laughs> oh, artist, I can just ask somebody else to do it. No, we should yeah. price ourselves. We should stand up to it. Mm -hmm. And we need to be business people I in agree. the arts. And I don't think that should be the whole focus, but we really need to have some business minded to us and not let it get distracted by it but we have to make sure that we stay alive so that we can keep doing the mm -hmm. arts if we don't focus on the business we're gonna we're gonna fall yes. as artists and as an art world and we can't fail we have to go and as you said uh what we do is important important it, is. it matters it makes people uh deal with their own feelings yes. right with their likes and dislikes with their stories so yeah. the Paul so said, art is very important. Yes. Uh, uh, Paul said artists often struggle with embracing what they do as a business, and that's exactly the point. Many people think business, marketing, uh, selling is all bad, right? Yeah. But if you want to thrive as an artist, yeah. you need really to embrace that. Yeah. Say, you do have to embrace yeah. it, yeah. and you can make it. You can be creative. We're artists, we're very creative people. Mm -hmm. And so I found my way to not destroy my art. And so I have to do the business side, but I only do it on certain times mm -hmm. and certain days so that I can really focus on my art so it's not driving me crazy. And so you just have to set boundaries and standards for yourself and you do have to do the business because art needs to go forward and we yes. have to survive. Yes, we do. And the marketing side, you have a video that became viral, right? Most of all. Most so, of all. Most of all. So, so tell me, how did that work for you? So um, I, I just was trying to find ways to, um, uh, get, to help people understand my art. Because the picture hard, so I hired a, a videographer to come into my studio. And I paid him. It was really scary. Oh, wow. It's expensive to hire somebody to come in. Yes. Or somebody to come in. And I made some really good videos because their skill is to make sure you look good. And mm -hmm. so I invested money into that. Mm -hmm. And then I just reach out to groups that have following that are interested in my art that I thought would be interested and say, hey, look, I have some videos. Would you like to share it? And they want content. So mm -hmm. these, uh, Facebook, Instagram group, they want cool content. And so if you can make your content interesting and cool and show your story, mm -hmm. then it shares well. And so that's just what I did. So I just reached out to companies and then bigger ones started reaching out to me and said, hey, look, I saw your video on this other group that maybe had 10,000 followers or 100,000 followers. Mm -hmm. And they have a million followers and say, hey, we'll share it. And <laughs> okay. And then they start uh, 5, million, uh, 5 million and then 20 million. Mm -hmm. So you have to start with the small ones and then they'll and start reaching out and you work. And so you want to start with a ten, uh, maybe 100 people, uh, 500 people, 1,000, 10,000. So you work your way. And so I've been working on that for uh, probably a year, year okay. and a half. So I've been working my way up. And, and so and recently, I've been getting to the big ones. To the big ones. And how has this impacted the business side of it? It's helped a lot. a lot. So I got featured on George Takai Presents. That's good. And he has about 10 million followers, but he has partnership with about 30 million. Yes. So that's a big group. And then another one, just recently, I got a feature on Board Panda Art. Mm -hmm. And they their group is about 30 million as well. Um, so they just recent, and they just directed a lot of people and I made a lot of connections. So I've been working with connections with branding, with um, businesses. So it's helped me um, sell some of my artwork. Yes. Yeah, of course. But it also helped me find the people that are interested in me and in my art. And, it, and I'm interested in them. So it's been so fun to be able to grow that but I don't think art should be oh look at I'm doing this art and you're just gonna watch it da 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 no mm -hmm. I'm trying to 
have that conversation. So anyone that messaged me on Instagram, Facebook, I'm going to message you back. If you have a question, I'm, I'm here for you. And I feel like that's my model. I want to be your friend. Uh -huh. If you're interested in my art, then we have something that connect together mm -hmm. and I want to be your friend. So I get people message me all over the world from India to Australia to Bulgaria to all over. And it's been so fun to talk with them mm -hmm. and to see what challenges they're facing. We talk and we try to, I try to help people and I feel like that's my way to give back. So yes, yeah. that's, that's fantastic. What's next for you? What's next for me is to maintain. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I, when you go viral, you get a lot of exposure mm -hmm. really fast. And sometimes it can be bad because it's all fast and and two weeks later it's all gone, yeah. right? Yeah. And so you have to maintain it. And so right now I'm just trying to keep up with all that and <laughs> just trying to catch up. And also this upcoming summer, I do a lot of art festivals, so I travel all over the U.S. Uh, selling my art. So give us an idea of where you're going to be this summer. So this summer I'm going to be in Seattle, mm -hmm. uh, San Francisco, Salt Lake City, uh, Las Vegas maybe. I was just in Phoenix, Arizona and let's see, a lot in Salt Lake. So I don't do as much anymore. I used to do more. I don't do as much art festivals. I do more online. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to, I'm actually building a couple more exhibitions for museums. So I'm working on some really big artwork wow. for yeah. exhibitions. So I'm doing more artwork accessible to the public, but I'm trying to build some exhibitions so I can teach people with it. Um, yeah, I really think art can teach people. Mm -hmm. And I'm a, as a teacher, that's important to me to teach. And so I want to teach people about how we interact with technology. So I, that's what's next. I'm trying to build some exhibitions okay. to teach about technology Fantastic. and how we interact with it and things like that. And locally, you, you do you, are you still at the Celebration Center? Yes, so I have an artwork in uh, Salt Lake City. I have a couple in okay. Salt Lake City. I have one out in the LDS uh, Church uh, Museum in downtown Salt downtown. Lake by their temple. I have one out there. And then I have one out in Provo or in Utah, the Woodbury Museum. And then I also have a solo exhibition at the Utah Cultural Celebration Center. And they invited me to come out to do that um, solo show. That was the first one I've done. So that <laughs> was kind of interesting. One? That was kind oh. of <laughs> scary. But uh. so it, you just, and I'm really new. I'm really young into this field. Mm -hmm. I'm learning. And I think that's just kind of how it goes. You just have to act like you know what you're doing, but you really don't. <laughs> and you fake it until you figure yeah. it out or make it. And so that's kind of what I've done. And just mm -hmm. talk with people, engage people, mm -hmm. um, help each other. Because I've tried to help people. And I think if you help people, they're going to help you back. Mm -hmm. And so we can't make enemies. We have to make yes. friends. And because create we all Because you don't know the person that you're being nice to mm -hmm. might be the next person that's going to be the judge or a person that's going to help you get a solo show down the road. Yes. And so you just have to always treat everybody good. And so uh -huh. I just always want to treat everybody good because everybody's so awesome. Yeah. People are just so good. Yeah. Regardless people of what. People are good. Yeah, yeah. people are just so too. good. And so I'm interested in just in getting to know them. Yeah. And I just want to be everybody's friend. It's, <laughs> it's a much better way to spend your time not creating holes but creating bridges, yes, right? Yes, absolutely. And, that's, and so that's what I try to do with everything I do. I just try to be the best I can mm -hmm. and just try to be the best friend for everybody and just right. try to help. <laughs> so I'm just a normal guy that's just <laughs> trying to help and just trying to... Are you, are you native to Salt Lake City? Yes, I was born here You're in Salt Lake City. Here. Cool, cool. Uh, Sammy Singh, thank you so much for sharing your art with us. Guest 721, amazing, thank you. Melissa Terlizzi, this is such wonderful advice. What an inspiration. Thank you. Sandy, how many pieces do you normally make in a month or in a year? Mm. <laughs> uh, just really depends on the <laughs> customs. Sometimes, well, the small ones I make a couple a month. Mm -hmm. uh, the bigger ones I make two or three a month. So it just really depends on what I'm working on. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one thing is when you're an artist, you you can spend hours in your studio but not really do art. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think you have to make sure you find that balance 
uh, when you're in the studio, you're working. And so I just kind of uh, find my balance. I said, when I'm in my studio, I'm working. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do the best I can because time is very valuable and mm -hmm. it's, it's yeah. It goes by fast. It goes by and fast. And so I just try to use my time very wisely. Yeah. And I set time for my family. But I have a young family. I have children. Oh, yeah. So Tell me about that. I set time for How my many? children. <laughs> I set time for my wife. I have set, I'm have I'm, uh, very involved in my deaf community. Be I was born deaf. Oh. And so I set time for my deaf community and those people and helping them. I set time because, good, good. you know, if you just don't. And I set time for my art because yeah, art course. is who I am and I have to set time for that. So I think you just have to make time for it. Right. How many kids do you have? Huh? Kids. How so kids? I have, I have a two and a half year old and I had a second one. She passed away. She was a stillborn. And so that was hard. It was yeah. devastating. And I didn't get to do art for a couple months, but it really hurt. And then I had a, I, my wife is pregnant with a third. Oh, cool. But I come up from my family. Uh, there's 10 children in my family. I'm the, I'm the baby. You're the baby. And <laughs> I'm an uncle like 40 something times. <laughs> so I have a lot of nieces and nephews. And so they're kind of like my children as well. That's normal in Utah though. <laughs> yeah, that's a Utah thing, I guess. We just, uh, Utah culture, we just have bigger families. Yes. And lots of children, we embrace families. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what drives Utah. Yes. And so we just That's embrace really cool. our family. I see them every week and it's been really fun. That's so. awesome. Thank you so much for devoting your time no and problem. sharing so much information with no everybody. Problem. Thank you. A big applause to you. You're fantastic. <laughs> and thank you to you a lot for being here and participating uh, and helping us create this podcast. Now, share this podcast, help get the word out about Eric Jensen. Uh, the more visibility art has in the world, the more beauty and the more happiness you bring. So let's share art as much as we can. I'll see you back here next Tuesday with another amazing artist. Thank you.